After our discussion about demand and supply of labor, we are going to talk about wage determination. The first thing we look at in a wage determination uh, case is the one of a perfectly competitive market. In a perfectly competitive market, we say that the demand and supply uh, in the labor market will determine the wage rate as well as the employment level. Here we look at both the perspective of the individual employer as well as employee. But before we talk about the employer and the employee, let's talk about some of the assumptions of perfectly competitive market. So let's look at some of the assumptions that go into the market of uh, perfect competition. The first assumption is that there are a large number of firms hiring a large number of individual workers, which means that um, many, many employers hiring many, many firms. Now, we will see this as a very important implication when it comes to wage determination because when you look at wage determination everyone both the employer and the employee are what we call wage takers neither the employer nor the employee have any economic power to affect wage rates because there are tons of employers and tons of employees and also the fact that there is perfect knowledge, which means that workers are fully aware of the job conditions, the market conditions, uh, the wage conditions, and both the employer and the employee know exactly what to pay and how much to be employed. Another key assumption that we mention in perfectly competitive market is the fact that there is perfect mobility of labor in terms of both the uh, uh, occupational mobility or geographical mobility so workers are free to move to alternative jobs and to different areas of the country where wage rates are higher lastly we also assume that labor is a homogeneous factor of production which means uh, that in perfect competition workers are uh, completely identical in a given category in terms of productivity. That homogeneity means, again, that wages will not be different from one worker to another. There will not be one worker getting more economic rent than the other because all workers are identical in a particular category. Now let's see this in terms of a diagram and understand how the employer and employee will be a wage taker in this market. We will be looking at three diagrams when it comes to labor market. One of the whole industry, the second one is of the individual worker, and the last one is for the individual firm. So worker, firm, and whole market. So in a market, what happens is that the market forces the demand supply will determine the wage rate. So when the demand and supply meet, we have uh, a wage rate of WM. Now this wage rate will be what we call the wage rate that will be given to both the employer and the employee. So if both of them are wage takers, they're too small to determine their own wage rate. They will take this uh, wage rate as the market wage rate. From the individual firm or employer perspective, the wage rate is the supply of labor. Why is that so? Because the firm can hire any number of workers at the existing wage rate. That's why supply of labor is perfectly elastic as uh, there is no uh, sort of limitation to the employment uh, supply for the going wage rate. Remember that this employer is very small compared to the market supply of labor and therefore he doesn't influence the wage rate. He can hire any number of workers, be it 5, 10, 20, uh, because there are many, many workers available. On the other hand, when you look at the demand for labor, the demand for labor is simply MRP, which is MP times P. As we talked about earlier, the demand for labor is downward sloping because, of course, in the perfectly competitive market, MP is downward sloping. Where demand meets supply, we get ourselves the, the profit maximizing level of employment. Now, if we go back to our older discussion, we said this, this is the point where MC equals to MRP, which is profit maximization. Prior to that, before Q1, MRP was greater than MC, which means that when MRP is greater than MC, we will be employing more worker because as you keep on hiring more worker, the revenue from the worker is greater than the cost of the worker, which means the marginal profit is positive. So as long as the marginal profit is positive, we keep on employing workers. But beyond Q1, what happens is that MRP is 
less than MC, which means we should employ less workers because every additional worker is adding more to cost than to revenue, which means that the marginal profit is negative. Only when MC equals to MRP, this is the point where profit is maximized. So from an employer perspective who is maximizing profit, he will do so at the point where MC equals to MRP. Now, from an employee perspective, on an individual perspective, we look at this diagram, where this going wage rate that we determine through the market forces of demand and supply becomes the demand for labor. Now, demand for labor is also perfectly elastic. That is, he can work as many hours as he wants at the existing wage rate. But how many hours will he supply? Well, that will depend upon the supply of labor. The individual supply of labor is upward sloping because, of course, as the wage rate goes up, so will be your willingness to work. We say that higher the wage rate, higher will be the number of workers employed. So we have an upward sloping supply of labor. Where the demand meets supply of labor, the worker will be supplying, for example, Q2 number of hours at the WM wage rate. So to conclude, in a perfectly competitive market, uh, there is neither the employer nor the employee determining the wages. It's the market forces of demand supply. Any change in demand supply can change the wage rate and therefore can change the employer and employee sort of graphs. One can argue that this uh, market structure seems more unrealistic given the fact that labor is homogenous, which doesn't seem to be the case in real world, and that the fact that uh, we assume there is perfect knowledge and perfect mobility of labor. However, just like with all other perfectly sort of competitive models that we made in the firm market, uh, we are trying to build a model which is uh, very strict and then what we can do is that look at the various assumptions, relax them to see how th it, this model can be tweaked for uh, real world. So while this model is useful in terms of in providing information about given all assumptions are strict, we will in the next sort of discussions talk about how some of these assumptions can be relaxed to make the model more suitable to how things happen in the real world.